Welcome to our Sunday devotional for November 28th, 2021, the first Sunday in the season of Advent. Our silent meditation this morning comes from Charlie Brown. Whenever I feel really alone, I just sit and stare into the night sky. I've always thought that one of those stars is my star, and I know that my star will always be there for me like a comforting voice saying, Don't give up, kid. We'll be talking a little more about Charlie Brown later on in the service. As I mentioned, today is the first Sunday of Advent, November 28th. Um, for announcements right now, let's see. Uh, St. Paul's, their sanctuary is decorated for Advent over at Salem, They will be having a hanging of the green service as their morning service, where a lot of the decorating will happen and be incorporated into the service. Uh, Next Sunday, December 5th, is a communion service, so please remember for next Sunday, if you're joining us virtually, to have your elements ready. Uh, Wine or grape juice, bread or a cracker, so that we can participate together in our Lord's meal. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I should also wish everyone a happy belated Thanksgiving. I hope you had a good and enjoyable day and took some time to thank God for the blessings we've been given. In the Advent season, we start with the lighting of the Advent candles on the wreath. We begin the season of Advent with expectant and believing hearts. We wait upon the Lord and place our hope in God's Word. During Advent, we confront the darkness that so often exists around us. We wait upon the Lord and place our hope in God's Word. During Advent, we confront the doubt that so often resides within us. We wait upon the Lord and place our hope in God's Word. During Advent, we confront the division that so often occurs between us. We wait upon the Lord and place our hope in God's Word. And today we light the first candle. The first candle reminds us of the ultimate hope that comes through our Savior's birth. In a world where we often get overwhelmed by our circumstances, Advent comes as a gentle whisper, offering us hope to heal the broken, befriend the lonely, and share the good news of the gospel. This morning, let us begin this Advent season with expectant and believing hearts. Light of Life, Maker of Day, Gather our shadows and cast them away. Beacon of truth, gleaming and bright, shine in our hearts. Shatter our night. Gracious God, as we embark upon another Advent journey, we pray that we would be encouraged by hope, strengthened in unity and inspired through faith. May our ears be open and our hearts ready to receive the gift of hope embodied in the Word made flesh. We pray this in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Lord Jesus Christ, We await your coming. We wait filled with hope, knowing your light will shine in the darkness. We wait anticipating your peace, believing that one day it will fill our world. We wait embracing your love. May we reach out to share it with our neighbors. And we wait with joy, bubbling as in expectation of your birth. Lord, we wait. Come soon and fill us with your life. Amen. 
We hear God's word of promise, and we respond with hope and trust. But we are also impatient, and sometimes we get the message wrong, and sometimes we hope for the wrong things. Let us admit our failings to God. Holy One, like the ancient people of Israel, we admit that we sometimes get it wrong. They thought you would send a conquering king to free them from their enemies. But you had bigger plans, to send the true king to free us from all, all our enemies and our most ancient enemy. So forgive us when we get it wrong, when we misunderstand the true scope of your plans for us. Give us once again hopeful hearts that trust in you. Amen. Let's take a few moments for silent reflection and confession. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. You know, I wonder. <clears throat> I wonder if God doesn't sometimes laugh at our tiny understanding of his truly huge plans. God forgives us and renews our hearts and minds to trust more fully in him. Thanks be to God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. I would invite you to gather the young people around the device, if they're not already there, for our children's time. And if you have downloaded the bulletin, you see a picture there. Right in the middle, we've got this great big Christmas tree. On one side, we've got, looks like a little girl. Looks like she's helping to decorate the tree. On the other side, you've got Jesus. And, of course, this is set outdoors, so we can see snow, definitely a winter scene. So here's the question. What is the biggest thing, the most important thing, that you think of when you think of Christmas? Is it the snow in wintertime and all the fun things you can do in the snow? Is it decorating a tree? And, of course, when we think about the tree, we think about gifts and candy canes and whatnot. Or is it Jesus? Because, remember, Christmas is when we celebrate his birth coming into our world. Snow, the tree, or Jesus? I'm going to give you a surprising answer. They're all important. They're all wonderful things. It's great to go outside and play in the snow. And who doesn't like decorating a tree and enjoying presents? Those are important. But when we think about it, the reason we celebrate Christmas is because of Jesus. So don't forget that. Enjoy everything else about Christmas. But don't forget that Jesus is why we celebrate it. Amen. <clears throat> we come to the time of the prayers of the people, and I would invite us to take a few moments in silent prayer to lift up our joys and give thanks, to lift up our concerns and ask for help. Let us be in prayer.
Amen. Gracious God, we give you thanks for hearing our prayers this day, both spoken and silent. We ask you to gather them up now and respond according to your wisdom, your mercy, and your timing. Amen. And let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever. Amen. We come to our reading of Scripture. Excuse me. And this year we're following the traditional themes of Advent. The first Sunday being hope. The second Sunday, peace. The third Sunday, joy. Um, in Latin, we call that Gaudete Sunday, rejoice. And the fourth Sunday, love. We don't follow the lectionary scriptures, or I should say I'm not following them, because I want to really draw out um, the, these themes. So today we hear twice from Isaiah, and then from Matthew. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2, and then verses 6 and 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. And then from Isaiah chapter 11, starting with verse 1. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. <clears throat> and we hear, and we'll be hearing throughout the season of Advent, <coughs> excuse me, parts of the Christmas story. From Matthew chapter 1, beginning with verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, 
Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. Here end our readings for this morning. Our message for today is entitled, Hope versus Reality with a question mark. Please join me now for a moment of prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Charlie Brown. Of all the Charlie Browns in the world, you are the Charlie Browniest. That's what Linus says to Charlie Brown, and that is not a compliment. The famous Peanuts comic strip character Charlie Brown gets called a lot of names, and that's by his friends. He frequently gets called a blockhead, the round-headed kid, and all sorts of other not very complimentary terms. In the Christmas cartoon, Charlie Brown has lost the joy of Christmas. Now, throughout the weeks of Advent, we will use his story, his search for the real meaning of Christmas, as we explore the traditional Advent themes of hope, peace, joy, and love. And, of course, on Christmas Eve, the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, even though Charlie Brown sounds pretty hopeless, at the beginning of the Christmas cartoon, he is actually a remarkably hopeful person. Think of all the times that he goes to kick that football. <clears throat> at the last minute, Lucy pulls it out, and he goes flying. But he keeps coming back, because he keeps hoping. Or all the times that Charlie Brown organizes the baseball team. Yeah, you know, his team almost always loses, But Charlie Brown keeps trying. He keeps hoping. Now, let's leap from Charlie Brown to the story of the Bible, the story of salvation. Ever since our spiritual ancestors, Adam and Eve, disobeyed God way back in the Garden of Eden, all of humanity had been on the outs with God. But God never gave up on us and set a plan in motion, a very long and complicated plan, to offer a new relationship to anyone who wanted it. When we read the Old Testament through the lens of Jesus, we see hints and promises, just a few at first, but more and more as the centuries roll by, hints and promises that God has a plan to restore the loving relationship between people and himself. The first hint actually comes way back in the book of Genesis, when God foretells a time when the serpent, Satan, will be vanquished. Definitely a dry morning. Now, by the time we get to the prophet Isaiah, about 700 years before Jesus, these hints and promises have become full-blown prophecies. Our first reading from Isaiah chapter 9 foretells a light that will come to the people who live in darkness. And then more specifically, we're told that this light will actually be a son, that's S-O-N, a human being born into the world with such grand titles as Mighty God and Everlasting Father, 
and that his authority will be established forevermore. <clears throat> well, clearly no mere human being can fill these shoes. This someone coming into the world <clears throat> is going to somehow be not just human, but also God, establishing an eternal kingdom. And then Isaiah chapter 11 narrows the focus, <clears throat> telling us that this promised someone will be a descendant of Jesse and King David, that God's Spirit will rest upon him, that he will establish a kingdom of righteousness and peace. Now, of course, as Christians, we can see where all this is leading, to Jesus, who would indeed fulfill these and many other prophecies. But imagine what these promises and prophecies would have meant to the people of Israel. Remember that the kingdom of Israel's glory days had only lasted about a century, <clears throat> way back with David and Solomon. And then for the next 900 years, things went steadily downhill. The kingdom split in two, invading armies repeatedly attacked and destroyed Israel's cities, and many people were carted away into exile. <clears throat> By the time of Jesus, the briefly glorious kingdom of Israel had been reduced to a third-world, insignificant backwater in the Roman Empire. Military occupation, overtaxation, corruption, and brutality were the name of the game. But over the centuries, the people of Israel never gave up hope, just as the prophecies bit by bit became more specific and detailed, pointing to some sort of Savior. So, too, the people's awareness that they needed a Savior became clearer and clearer. In the time just before Jesus' birth, people had very specific ideas about how, well, at least how they thought, God's promises would be fulfilled. Some thought they needed a military leader to bring them freedom by banishing their greatest enemy, the Romans. Others thought that they needed a priest who would restore proper worship and righteousness to Israel. But everyone agreed they needed help, that God's promise would be that help, and that their thousand-year hopes would finally be fulfilled. And just like Charlie Brown, they never gave up hope. No matter what happened, Invasions, attacks, exiles, the people kept their hope alive that God would somehow come and save them. Just like Charlie Brown never gave up hope that he would eventually kick that football or that his baseball team would eventually win a game. And by the way, I think in one of the later cartoons, they did win a game. <clears throat> Again, as Christians, we know the rest of the story. God did indeed send a Savior, whose plan was actually way bigger than just restoring a little nation in the ancient Near East. <clears throat> in Jesus, God would banish the biggest enemies of all, sin, death, and Satan. In Jesus, God would bring an even greater freedom, freedom from the consequences of sin and punishment. And in Jesus, God would give us a new chance to live in a righteous, loving relationship with God. Friends, just as the people of Israel never gave up hope, just as they continued to trust and hope that God would make good on his promises, in the same way, we should never give up hope that God will come to our aid. And yes... Just as the people of Israel didn't know exactly how or when God would accomplish everything, we may also feel confused or frustrated at times as we wait for God to come through for us. But just as God made good on the promise to send a Savior, and did so in a much bigger, more complete way than anyone back then could have imagined, so too... We should keep hoping, knowing that when God does come through for us according to our needs, 
and he will come through. When that happens, it may well be in ways that are different and bigger than we could have ever imagined. Amen. Let us take a moment to dedicate the many offerings and gifts that the churches have received to support their ministries. <clears throat> and we join together in our response. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what I can, I give him. Give my heart. Indeed, Lord, how can we thank you for all that you have given us? Send us and these gifts forth to be a blessing and a sign of hope for all who sit in darkness. In your precious name we pray. Amen. And let's join in our commission. The coming of our Lord is near and we wait with hope-filled hearts. Draw near, Lord Jesus Christ, God beyond imagining, fully God, yet truly human. Draw close. Amen. <clears throat> Friends, now, <clears throat> now may the hope fulfilled in ancient days be ever new in your hearts, giving you courage to trust the promises of God. Amen. <clears throat>